Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Anur Verma, Junior Resident in Radiology Department in Dr. Ulas Patel Medical College Hospital. I'm presenting before you a paper on the role of MI imaging and evaluation of anorectal fistula. So fistula and anor is a track line by granulation tissue which connects perianal skin superficially to anal canal and rectum or rectum deeply. It usually occurs in pre-existing anorectal abscess which bursts spontaneously. Its wall is made up of inflammatory granulation as well as fibrous tissue. Perianal fistula occurs in approximately 10 out of 10,000 people. It usually occurs in adult men with maximum incidence between third and fifth decades. The most common presenting symptoms are pain and discharge. Perianal fistula sometimes lead to acute abscess formation where immediate decompression becomes necessary. However, most simple fistula can be treated electively using fistula tonic. The goal of the treatment in an anal fistula is to eliminate the primary opening, any associated tracts, and any secondary opening without loss of continent. The external opening is visible on inspection, and internal opening can be determined by probing. However, it seldom helps and is not recommended these days. The role of imaging is to define the course of track between these image openings so that the appropriate surgical option can be used. Surgical treatment of fistula in anno is notorious for high recurrence rates. The successful ma surgical management of fistula in anno depends upon accurate preoperative assessment of the course of the primary fistula tract, the presence and the site of any secondary extension or abscess. Thus, the role of MR is to evaluate the fistula, define its anatomy and help in planning the management and surgery. Aim is basically to determine the role of MR in diagnosing and describing the characteristics of fistula in anno in a preoperative assessment of perianal fistula. So our study includes 30 patients with suspected perianal fistula having one or more external openings visiting OPD or admitted to our institute. Both men and women were included in our study. Previously operated or patients with recurrent perianal disease were excluded from the study. All patients underwent MR imaging examinations on Siemens 1.5 Tesla MR machine using body surface coil. Sequences were acquired in both coronal and axial planes. MR protocol consists of axial T1, axial T2, axial T2 fat sat axial, post contrast fat sat axial, coronal and sedated sequence. St. James University Hospital MR imaging classification of perianal fistula was used to classify fistula. Both internal and external openings were recorded as their positions on an anal clock and at the correct level in anal canal rectum. Discharge from a fistula will act as an inherent contrast. Saline will only be injected in the cutaneous opening if at all required. So basically, this is a normal MR, MR anatomy uh, of male, and uh, you can see this ischial anal fossa. There's this anal canal. There's internal sphincter, the external sphincter here, the intersphincter space here. And uh, when we talk about fistula, the good soul's rule is a must. So it states that an external opening anterior to the transverse anal line will track into a straight sinus in a radial manner while an external opening posterior to the transverse and line will follow a curved course to the posterior midline. An exception to this rule is the external openings 3 cm away from the anal verge. So we have the Parks classification here and we have two classifications. We have the Parks and the St. James University and the Parks classification is basically in four types. In this intersphincteric, there's transphincteric, there's supraspinteric and there's exospinteric. And we, while reporting, use the St. James University MR classification. So we grade it accordingly. So grade zero is basically normal appearance. Grade one is simple linear intersphincteric fistula. There's grade two intersphincteric fistula with secondary fistula strike and abscess. Third is transphincteric fistula. Fourth is transphincteric fistula with an abscess or secondary track with an issue anal or issue rectal fossa. Fifth is supralevator and translevator disease. Grade 1, so we, as we can see in this image, on T2 stored transverse and T2 stored coronal images, it shows a simple linear non-branching intersphincter fistula strand in the left perianal region without crossing the midline or involving ischiorectal spaces. In grade 2, we can see there's this high signal intensity fluid collection along the right posterior lateral aspect of an alkanal. And as you can see in this contrast and as T1, fat suppressed T1 weighted image, you can see the abscess in the right posterior lateral aspect of intersphincter space bounded by external sphincter. This is grade two. In grade three, we have a highly enhancing transphincter fistula piercing through the external sphincter noted above the anal words and coursing posterior infernally into the ischiorectal fossa. And grade four is basically 
it shows a transplanted fistula with its opening at two o'clock. Okay, and with its internal opening at two o'clock, and on T one weighted image, it shows the same transplanted fistula, and on axial contrast image. And as fat suppressed T1 weighted image, it shows an abscess in the left ischiorectal fossa in the same patient. In grade 5, it shows a hyperindexed transplanted fistula at 5 o'clock patient with partial costume ramification, suggestive of supraspinctic fistula. And so, results where 30 patients were eligible for the study, there were 6 females and 24 males. Their ages range between 25 to 65 with a mean of 45 years. The most common present complaint was pain in 12 patients followed by discharge in 5 patients. 16 patients had single fistula and 4 had multiple perianal fistula. 10 cases had grade 1 fistula, 4 had grade 2 fistula, 2 cases had grade 3 fistula and 3 cases had grade 4 fistula and the rest 1 case had a grade 5 fistula. These are the tables. To discussion. Basically, the clinical examination can often be difficult because of induration and inflammation in the patient with anal sepsis. Previous fistula surgery, the complexity of the fistula tract, lack of identification of internal fistula opening, wrongly diagnosed primary tracts, and missed secondary tracts have been identified as independent risk factors associated with a poor outcome after surgery. At MR imaging, identification and localization of the entire cryptogranular fistula, including the external opening, the primary tract, the secondary tract, the abscesses, and the internal opening are essential for fistula classification and treatment. Inadequate assessment of the fistula may result, or may result in a simple fistula developing into a complex fistula. And failure to recognize secondary extensions can result in recurrent sepsis and an unnecessary protracted clinical course. So MR imaging has emerged as the imaging technique of choice. It's a gold standard basically for preoperative evaluation of perianal fistula, providing a highly accurate, rapid, and non-invasive means of performing pre-surgical assessment. MR imaging improves and provides a precise definition of the fistula tract along with its relationship to pelvic structures and allows identification of secondary tracts or abscesses. Accordingly, MI imaging provides accurate information for appropriate surgical treatment, decreasing the incidence of recurrence and allowing side effects such as fetal incontinence to be avoided. Readers should be familiar with the anatomic and pathological classification of perianal fistula and classify them using the St. James University Hospital MI imaging grades. In this way, appropriate surgical management can be planned and recurrences can be provided. These are my references. Thank you.